Welcome to Ecology. I'm really excited to have you in this class with me this semester and I'm looking forward to working with you in the field and also integrating a lot of the material from your readings into our, our research projects. In this chapter we'll be going through kind of an overview of just what ecology is and then looking at some particular research efforts that have gone on and then addressing the whole scope of ecology just what what is ecology all about during this chapter you read about uh, things like the definition of ecology, that it's the interaction between organisms and their environment, and that all of this happens in an ecosystem. And the largest ecosystem that we'll encounter is the biosphere. As you can see from this diagram in, in your book, the biosphere encompasses all of the organisms and the, the physical environment that they inter interact with all across the world. And then we have the other levels of um, structure underneath that, working all the way down to the individual organisms. An ecologist really needs to understand all of these interactions in order to get at his studies effectively. Now, the first example of a, a study that the book talks about is this study of warblers that MacArthur did. And warbler is a small bird that we have in this area, but we don't see very much because they hide in the trees. And in this study, MacArthur was trying to get at the idea that uh, there can't really be two species living in the same place at the same time, eating the same food, or depending on the same resources. And so when he looked at the warblers and saw them in the pine trees, he kind of wondered about this theory. And as you can see from the diagram, he really um, looked carefully at pine trees and saw that the warblers were all five of these species were using pine trees, but they were using the pine tree in different specific regions. So although they had some overlap, the primary usage areas were separated. In this way, they divided up the resource. It's called resource partitioning that they were involved in in order to allow them to survive in, in the pine trees and uh, ended up they weren't violating this theory of resource utilization. Another approach that some research, researchers take is called stable isotope analysis. And here you get to use all of that wonderful chemistry that you've learned. Uh, as it turns out, there is uh, a ratio of different isotopes that's elements that have different atomic masses uh, that's unique to, to various areas or to various types of foods. So if an organism is feeding on a type of leaf, you can track that based on the, um, the ratio of isotopes in that organism. So you can actually get some idea of where the organism has been and what it's been eating with this type of analysis. Another interesting area of research is uh, taking place in the forest canopy in the rainforests. Here there's so much rain that it washes out most of the nutrients from the soil. So a lot of the cycling of nutrients that goes on actually happens in the canopy up in the, t the tops of the trees where plants are growing on the trees. These plants are called epiphytes and they kind of develop a, a soil of their own on the branches and it makes for a very interesting ecosystem that researchers have been studying quite extensively over the past uh, 20 years. 
Moving now to a much larger scale, we look at the research that's being done in the area of climate change and the associated change to the ecological systems that result from that. This is a, a global effort, really, and it spans a broad range of, of time. Uh, the study that's referred to in your book by Davis involves taking a core from the bottom of a lake and this core sample you can kind of peel away layers which are equivalent to years if you know the rate of uh, deposition of that sediment in the lake you can figure out how old the different layers are and you can look at the types of pollen that occur in each layer and figure out what kinds of trees were surrounding that lake maybe 5,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago. Similar type of research is being done in Antarctica where they're taking cores of the ice sheet that covers Antarctica and looking at the concentration of carbon dioxide that's in the air bubbles that have been trapped in the ice. And here they can get some idea of what the atmosphere was like many, many years ago. So when we consider the overall scope of ecology, we're really thinking about okay, what is the interaction of organisms and, and those organisms with their environment um, over a broad spectrum of time or maybe just a, a narrow spectrum. We, we can look at maybe what organisms are doing underneath a particular rock in a stream or we can consider what's happening throughout the whole river from the, the source to the mouth. Uh, some of the, this research is done in the field and there there's observations of what occurs naturally or maybe it's done in the lab and you're observing uh, a very small occurrence or maybe you're manipulating the situation. You can do this in the field or in the lab to change the environmental structure or maybe introduce a new species to a system and see what happens. All these different types of research are possible in the field of ecology. So for this first chapter, we have had an overview of just what ecology is, some individual experiments that have been done, and then we got a rough idea of uh, the expansiveness of ecological studies.